about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. When God began to build and train me, God made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my earth work, the Holy Spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact any transformation you see that for me the spirit of the living god is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that god will like you he is what you call eternal life if you are not aware of that be aware eternal life is not what he brings his very presence is the life of god Jesus never became the Christ. He was the son of the carpenter. He could die. That's why his parents ran away with him. But when the spirit of God came, he made him the Christ. So when the Bible says in Christ, it's not just saying in Jesus alone. In Jesus, yes, but together with the spirit of life. Look at what we have taught people about faith today. Look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of Christ that we call faith. Right? We teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo. That's why it's not working. Let me tell you, faith is a product of an encounter. When the Bible says faith comes by hearing, do you hear what you read? Answer me. You see, we need to examine. It was, talk, it was a spiritual language. It was not even just talking about hearing with the ear. There is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings. And that's what produces true faith. Because when the Bible says hearing and hearing by the word, at that time, there was no books like this. King James had not authorized this. So what did they call the word? The days that are coming will be fierce. The days that are coming will be spiritual. Right now, have you seen the way the world is going lately? There is no embarrassment about spirituality again. Is that true? Everybody is opening up. It used to be in secrecy before. But right now, there is an open confrontation. It's like everybody is saying, Kai, I'm not hiding it again. I'm gay. Simple. Kill me if you will kill me. Up. It's not today it has been like that. Another person is saying, it's not only you, two of us too. Another person is saying, let me tell you, I've not been a real Christian. This is my charm. Oh yeah. You see, everybody is confessing one by one. One by one. The meaning of that is, darkness is about to reveal itself publicly. Right? And it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim. Someone is building a house with blocks and cement. When you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week, one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two cores of blocks. It will scatter everything. What sort of wind is that? Is it now wind started? How many hurricanes are on right now? And scientists say 
they watch from space that before the hurricane comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens this is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious to be spiritually minded the holy spirit is the advantage of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage, right? There are so many people who now challenge their pastors, challenge everybody. Are you the only one who will preach? Are you the only one? We have a democratic church that can vote out, throw out pastors because of policies. Have you read in First Samuel, I can't remember, I think maybe chapter 15 or 13 one time when saul is that true when samuel told saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly is that true he was coming to make a sacrifice they gathered the people it's in your bible and then saul told the, i mean samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come and they waited for him they waited for him they waited for him after they waited for him people were scattering and the ego of the king Saul was was at stake and he said Kai this guy is not coming let me what offer the bond offering as soon as he offered the bond offering Samuel came and he said well uh, I'm, I'm sorry honestly I was afraid it's not like I wanted I need to I didn't want to do it the people were disturbing me and since you were not around I thought since I was a king let me do it and Samuel said you have done foolishly he said if you had allowed me to come god would have established your throne so it would have now be son of saul not son of david he said because you have done this the kingdom is taken to you for god has found another man after his heart just for violating the priesthood how many people violate the priesthood today and they don't care right all kinds of people any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible it's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of god is choosing the vocation of preaching right so that when one walk or the other doesn't work or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative you just say talk it's okay at least you are preaching you see this is our mindset so we do not we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar there were times in the bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things they left it there have you read about uza in the bible i'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards the bible says we do not discern the body of christ and many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate right remember that there was a time when the ark of god was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called uza for his sincere love for god wanted to run and just block the ark what happened to him he died instantly have you read your bible when miriam and aaron looked at their brother and said kai see you you are our younger brother don't open eye for us here is it only you that god will speak to huh we were all born by this and that and moses didn't say anything what happened a cloud came at once miriam became as white as snow 
white as snow right and Aaron Aaron it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him we have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally when they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in 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 five months God can open you to fountains of blessings you know they look around and say eh, I know it's not like I'm saying God cannot do it but you see we have to calculate how A will become B and how C will become D. Look at how people try to run ministry today. Right? They try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways. Look at how people try to generate finances for ministry. When you see that, you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality. How did they build the tabernacle in the Old Testament? Because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness. How did the supply come? How did their clothes grow with them and their sandals today if we were before the red sea this is what apostle joshua selma would have done engineers where are you the spirit of bazalel and then we'll start constructing a bridge we're saying that if i'm a prophet in five years we'll cross this red sea see that that's how we would have worked that's how much we have reduced god that's exactly what we would have done. And then the engineers come. And we say, okay, let's start doing everything. Let's start the architects come. Let's start. And then where are the kingdom financiers? And then prayer department. Where are? And then we keep praying. And God says, is that all to me? And then after five years, we say, now you will cross the bridge slowly. And while we are crossing, we'll be singing choruses. And when we reach there, I will put a, menu, a monument. Prophecy walked into motion by apostle joshua selma shame on us because we call that the old testament we laugh at them we even say they are a shadow of us are you joking read hebrews 11 there are men who in their humanity we cannot even touch their shoes yet that's the old testament we are very quick to say it's old we have done away with it but we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done it's in your Bible. People invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies. When was the last time you saw that? When was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening all around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. How many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems? Look at, look at Jesus. Jesus inspires me. These guys who were with the guy that was crippled, they knew that if they could only see Jesus, that situation would be over. Is it not in your Bible? And they said, let's tear this man's ceiling. We will explain it to him afterwards. Today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves. Is that true? And do a lot of carnal things. There is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural. Or and, 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 and that of unbelievers. If I stand right now and I minister to Sam and he falls under the anointing, people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft. Where did we leave our spirituality? Is it not in your Bible that Jesus with the divine light walked through people on a cliff? They were trying to kill him. He walked through them like a spirit. Where is that generation? I wanted to show us a video. It's just that um, we, we, we didn't have it. I didn't discuss with the media. Would have shown us that video um, of Patricia King. Right? I know they don't have it. They may not have it now. Otherwise, you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven real oil physical oil you would have seen the foot of real angels that you are not pressing into god doesn't mean some other people are not the divine life we shout zoe we shout zoe but there is nothing zoe about our lives if they shoot me i die zoe right 
every ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me so way now i don't say this in a derogatory way i'm saying this to challenge us i guarantee you if we learn how to receive that zoe life you will watch hivs get healed as if they do not exist it will no longer even be a prayer point the more i see people line up for counseling i don't rejoice to say wow it means i'm an anointed man i look at people line up for counseling and i bleed in my heart because i say shame on us it means we are doing very small a sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people but today we say wow i had a crowd hundreds of people to to mean that ministry is moving forward wrong parameters because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard who is god speaking to tonight where have you reduced god let me tell you one day maybe i'll come in the night i'll bring a chair here one coin on here we'll just sit down and we'll discuss and i'll share with you some of my encounters when god began to walk with me some of you if i share it as you are seated now you've seen me every day you've even eaten with me but you will not believe it because you say it's a lie encounters with angels all kinds of spiritual encounters because i believe in him i believe in him I'll never forget the first time I had the audible voice of God. Let me tell you something. If you hear God, you must have faith. You see that? It's not about maybe I'm trying to calculate. You must have faith. Listen. At the, at the Mount of Transfiguration, when Elijah and Moses appeared, what did Peter do? Peter recognized them immediately. Had he ever seen them? Who told him? He said, what? I see three people. It's a privilege. That means I have questions to ask. Let's prepare three beds. One for Elijah, one for Moses because he thought they came to pass the night with Jesus and discuss a lot of things. When an angel appeared to Mary, Mary was not afraid. Meaning was a natural occurrence. It was the salutation she was afraid of, not the angel. Today, if somebody says, I see an angel, say, I beg Jerry, angel, where you think angels are just like that? Yet the Bible says, are they not ministering spirit? I'm showing you why we have become carnal. We threw away the Holy Spirit. We are gradually kicking the Holy Spirit out in a bid to do what we call word, 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 word. Right? Word, word, word. Just the word. Give it the word and, and don't give me anything else. There are even people who reject Jesus and say, just give me Bible. Give me Bible, Jesus, go. Once it's not Bible, even Jesus should go away. And the devil likes that theology. If it is Bible you want, Zondervan, keep publishing. New versions keep coming out. And we keep carrying the Bible. And we convince ourselves that because we are holding Bible and reading it, we are growing in the world. But we are becoming carnal. That's why death is rampant. It is that carnality. Do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us? Is that true? Witchcraft in the village is not a shock. An average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft. So if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear, he will believe it. But in the church, ah, if I disappear here now, now, in this place, finally the article will be complete. The article you have been writing, you will pay New Nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it. Confirm. Hey, witches on suit. Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? Truly there is an army that is rising up. But let me tell you, our level of transformation is slow. We are hardly becoming like the Christ. There is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church called spiritual growth prosperity since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come and say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go 
to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of 100,000 which, which pastor or which Christian can hardly do that in Nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and matched our spirituality so if I come out with a jeep if there are five jeeps that are lined up here you say man God is in Koinonia what? five jeeps is here oh In Bible days, men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit. One man will threaten a nation, not a politician, but Elijah, not in a radio station. He made a declaration to the heavens. He vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said, me, I speak, there will not be rain. Not God revealed to me. I stand in my office over this territory and I said there will not be rain and he went to bed it was by sorcery Jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head how many men of God have disgraced themselves on television how many men of God have disgraced their ministries in newspapers how many men of God predicted that 2012 is his rapture Huh? How many? You see, we, we, we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years. Instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation, we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more. Today, people talk about the anointing, but they do not even know what the anointing is. No, at all. I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healings and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working. It's not working. No. We have to be, admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now right I think one of them is a miscarriage issue I'll minister to her shortly and then another person the question is if that happens in your church what will you tell them I know what you will tell them I know what you will tell them you don't have faith if you have faith you will provoke my oil there's no problem with my own end it's you that don't, you are liars. We are must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of those people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the son, and that means I believe that his life is in me. But where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it. Fragments of it. But there is a revival that is coming this will be a revival of the spirit himself when the spirit of god will start schooling people by ourselves because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us the spirit of god in these days the lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week i've been under an intense anointing right from when i finished the, the financial series and the Holy Ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people as many who are interested there will be such a move of the spirit I'm telling you God will begin to tutor people and the more you see him the more you will know preachers are lying the more you encounter him the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars the Lord is revealing this to me this is how God trained me God taught me so many things secrets in the bible there are times that i will the lord will be visiting me and his presence physical cloud i'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about real cloud like a fog will fill the room 
and I'll lie down there and the pages of my Bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures. I hope you believe it. Hallelujah. We have reduced God. We have reduced God. It's, this is too bad. To an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up, people look and they say, Kai, who knows him? Look at how you put pressure on men of God. People come for miracle service, we have to be asking them, where are you coming from? So that you don't think that they organize things around. It's a shame. It's a shame. It says, he that has a son has life. Has life. Look at what Jesus did. An example of what we should become. Jesus, five loaves and two fish, he multiplied it. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Everywhere we go, we are doing bad or at least average. And yet we claim to have his spirit. There are people who even brag and say, I have the spirit of Jesus without measure. Where is it? Where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here, you have a stomach ache and somebody will arise. And because I did not minister in truth, my lie will... Do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you? How many people don't pray? They come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense. I am a prayer warrior. But there is a, there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer. It follows their teachings. It's like a spirit. It's like a finishing on your words. If you are a man of the altar, it truly, that fire, it's not just the shouting. There is a communication of life. How many people claim they are prayer warriors? And they stand and speak. And while they are speaking, you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically. Because there is no life that is coming. The question God is asking you is why did you stop believing in me? Many of us did not start like this. God is speaking to us. Many of us, when we started, we were spiritual. We meant business with God eventually as we started getting some results in our lives we have thrown the holy spirit out now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures it means we are growing spiritually do you not see the need in our world today there are people with hiv cancer there are people in need of the zoe life that we claim to have we claim to have zoe i am an ambassador of the kingdom then demonstrate it he said, when I came to you, I did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech. Because I know the danger that it can do to you. But when I came, I came in a demonstration. I came to prove to you. I came to bring the Jesus of your Bible to be made manifest here and now. Ah, this is the theme of my life. That everywhere I go, I become an expression of his reality. That no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshiping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around. And we give all kinds of explanations for it. Do you not see what is happening to the body of Christ? But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally, he's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials. Where in a sleep, you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you, right, I want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power. And when you wake up in the morning, like, like Solomon, an intelligence you cannot account for all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me i remember a time in my life 
when I will sleep in the night, this happened for almost two months. And at least one of God's generals will come to me in dreams, explaining to me their perspectives. I remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives. I remember a man called Peter Tan. The first time I would meet that man was in a vision. The first time I ever saw Apostle Paul, he was in a vision. I didn't even know he was the one. I just saw a man who was short and bald headed after speaking to me then i asked who are you and he didn't respond to me he moved a while and then he turned and said paul the first time i would see the picture on the internet i said this is the man i saw yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the name koinonia was a revelation it's not that i just sat down and said kai what should we call it now no no right now everything we do is sensual and carnal the exact blueprint and the things that we're doing in this ministry were a revelation a revelation by god it was the spirit of god that revealed to me the secret of church growth now i'm not saying i'm throwing away materials and all of that it's good i've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves but I'm saying, Koinonia, hear me. If we throw away the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, let me have somebody here, just one person, anybody. You're a visitor, you're a pastor. Don't worry. You came all the way. Or you served in Jigawa and you're here right now. Your face is new. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with him. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating, let it be with him. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a person you leave. And then when you come for koinonia, oh, sweet Holy Spirit, I, I love you. And, and all those things you say, I, I love you. You are my all in all. You are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring. The Holy Spirit was sent literally, literally to continue the ministry of Jesus. If you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life, study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you, including revealing himself. There was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said, who do men say I am? One day the Holy Ghost will ask you, who do men say I am? Say, you are, you are the spirit of this. You are the, and then he says, who do you call me? And you say, I don't know you. And he says, now write, my name is the spirit of life. And to you, that becomes a revelation. At once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartation. When was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about. The real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement. You don't know retreat. Unfortunately, in the kingdom, you must retreat to advance that you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple your temple now not a building is filled with his glory and songs begin to come look at what musicians write nonsense they, they write songs that don't bless anybody they just come up with songs the reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income
when was the last time you stood in his presence and you began to worship until your worship became a song and you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit when was the last time you went to minister man of god and you stood in that meeting and when you finished people were shaking they could not explain what happened they knew that something heavenly like the dew of the morning came upon them they may not even remember what you thought but they knew they carried the spirit when was the last time because of your teaching someone just turned and said lord i will seek you and lock yourself three days do that today in our generation and people say you are over spiritualizing things so god is not like that this guy came all the way from where from from jigawa state to come for a meeting because there is a hunger it's not a conference it's not a convention but hunger brought him right god must show us something in this generation otherwise these games that we're playing will end up frustrating us god must show us something that's my cry as a man of god i cry to god and i say lord i don't want to do the ordinary there is something you've got to show me that's why i love my secret place those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist my life is like a herbalist you don't see me roaming around the street eating granite and moving i say ah it's a joyful day no i'm on a pursuit i'm on a serious pursuit i seek his face for a living i seek his face for a living i seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face my relevance is tied to his glory my ability to translate the realities in christ let me tell you something my my goal i've seen it in visions but they have not happened i saw one time in a vision let me share with you one vision that i had one time i i say it jokingly but truly truly i had a vision and a ghastly motor accident happened ghastly motor accident as it was happening it's like i was caught up from somewhere a physical location with my body and all of a sudden i appeared there and it was just like a shadow like this just passed through those dead bodies and including the car there was a sound like the car the way it hit the impact it came back as though nothing had happened ah may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the military rest. You invoke the power of creation, the soul of the earth. And you find, is it not in your Bible where you see that many things happen to people? Flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of Israel because God wanted his people to go. This bow and arrow we are using can only go so far. We are desperately in need of a spiritual generation. AK-47 can only do its best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited. Because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them. Because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming. Even if you are not interested, there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit. For you to do that, you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry. Because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension. But how many people are that willing? Bless you. How many people are that willing? How many people are that willing? To see the power of God. Transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now. I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach, I don't like people turning to me and saying, man of God, your message was powerful. Powerful in what? I want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that. I want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming. 
not just that a great man of God visited a place that's not enough and this life is in his son he who has the son has this divine life but the divine life is useless if we just leave it in Christ it must be translated to find expression the more of God's life and God's glory transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life the more you are fulfilling what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness and then you become as I would say the envoys of his presence carriers of his glory carriers of his power then you will see the eyes of the blind open then you will see the ears of the deaf unstopped. Hallelujah. While I was ministering over the weekend, there was a woman who, I don't know if they went to wash her ear or something, and then the ear was blocked during the workers' conference of CDC. And I called the woman out, and standing face to face, I said, I can either ruin this woman's life with lies or give her something that is of the truth. One time, Benny Hinn was laying hands on people, and they were falling down. And Ora Roberts looked at him and said, Benny, don't just lay hands on them. He said, give them something. Oh, fine. Can you spare 10 minutes for us to watch the video right now? Media is ready with the video. Okay, media. Just, just play. Guys, maybe you can sit down and then after that, you come up. Let's, let's give the media 10 minutes to play the video. And um, it's a video of the supernatural. It's to spoil you. And then I'll come up and, and, and wrap up very quickly. Hi, we're in San Juan, Puerto Rico, where there's an amazing outpouring of the supernatural taking place. The Lord is touching so many lives in amazing ways, angelic visitation, uh, very unique signs and wonders, which will actually show you in a few moments, you'll be absolutely astounded at what the Lord is doing. But it's especially touching the younger generation on this island who are getting so fired up for God. There seems to be an acceleration of souls getting saved, healings, deliverances, miracles, all those good things with people deepening in their worship and, and loving the word of God. And so it's a, it's a true revival that is hitting people's hearts as these signs and wonders are being poured out. So we're at the House of uh, Restoration and Mercy with Pastor Dennis Roja, and uh, it's just awesome what is taking place. Pastor Dennis is one of the most humble people that I have ever met. He's so precious, has just a small uh, work and a uh, very humble work. It reminds me of, of, of where Jesus loves to hang out and he is at this church doing great things. Um, Pastor Dennis uh, was uh, in, in, in 1977 uh, he had his first visitation of Jesus. It was an absolute encounter where he could touch Jesus, hear him talk, feel him. Jesus came to see him. He had a crown on his head with every stone of the 12 tribes of, of uh, Israel. And that's significant because we're going to show you the visitation of the stones that have come to Pastor Dennis in this last year um, that confirm that vision that he had back in 1977. When Pastor Dennis received that uh, first vision that he had, it was after he had been saved and delivered out of a lifestyle of homosexuality. He was a, a transvestite, cross-dresser, and the Lord saved him. And after that visionary encounter of Jesus Christ, Jesus touched him on the head, and all the demons completely came out of him. He became so fired up for God, a fiery believer, uh, has worked as an evangelist for a number of years and even in this uh, past few years has been pastoring. But there's been a phenomenal outbreak of signs and wonders, including oil being poured out, uh, gemstones appearing. In fact, he has received over 1,200 gemstones, um, all, already different colors. Some of them are diamonds, some rubies, emeralds. Uh, there's uh, silver uh, and, and, and gold dust that's fallen and all different colors of dust, diamond dust and emeralds and sapphires and, and onyx stone. In fact, I've got onyx, um, little pieces of onyx stone right now, right on my hands here uh, because uh, we just dumped them into this whole barrel of oil that the Lord uh, gave 
uh, to Pastor Dennis in, in, in his church. It kept pouring out, pouring out. They collected it in a big barrel of oil. And in it, it's filled with little onyx stones, uh, which is one of the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was telling us that as people take the oil out to take samples of it, and it has this incredible fragrance to it, that it just keeps filling up. So ho ho however much goes out, comes back in. Uh, right now in the current church that he's in, that he has a Bible open on the podium, and oil just fills the pages of the Bible. It's filling the pages of the Bible, and uh, little gemstones, little rough cut diamonds, are falling out of the Bible onto the podium. And then, as he squeezes the Bible, the oil comes out, copious amounts of oil. This particular oil smells like myrrh. It's got the smell of myrrh on the inside of it. And it comes pouring off the podium into a uh, collection vessel that he has. And at the same time, these kind of um, manifestations are happening. In fact, he's got oil being poured down the walls of his church, off the beams, onto the floor, onto the seats. And it's just nonstop, continuous pouring out of oil. At the same time, these manifestations are taking place. Um, there's souls being saved. There's people being healed. Intense worship and prayer. Uh, deliverances. People are being set free. This is truly a move of God. And that's how you can confirm if a sign is really from God. It'll cause people to worship the Lord more, to seek Him more. The signs of salvation and healing and deliverance and all the things that represent the kingdom of God should accompany the signs and wonders if they're truly signs and wonders from Jesus Christ. It must bring our focus back onto Him. That we'll get crazy in love with Jesus more and more and more. I tell you, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. When the oil started dripping soon after that, um, uh, Pastor Dennis came into his building one morning and all of a sudden the whole place was filled with gold dust that had fallen on the floor. And that's when he first noticed the prince. He was so excited. The Lord revealed to him that this was an angel that had visited and the prints that were on the floor, the footprints, were actually the footprints of that angel. They're about 16 to 20 inches long, I believe. And um, then uh, he had to go away the cleaning woman came in, cleaned up all the gold, vacuumed up the gold. And so when he came back, the prints were gone. He was so uh, concerned. But the Lord said, I'm going to visit you again. He visited again in that way. And on the carpet were the, the two footprints of the angel. Once again, this time, he cut out the carpet, cut out the footprints to keep them. And uh, we'll just show that to you on the screen. Um, and it's just covered in this in this gold dust with diamond dust, silver, uh, emerald, ruby, sapphire, all these different colors. It's just absolutely brilliant. I know that the actual footage I don't think does it justice, but when you're here, you can actually feel the presence of the Lord all throughout this room. And so it's really an amazing time. Uh, he was also at a, uh, a, a prayer meeting with five men praying. And they were uh, praying, and as they prayed, the Lord visited with an audible voice. And with the audible voice, the Lord said that he was going to give Pastor Dennis a gift that he had given to no Jew. And Pastor Dennis said, well, why are you giving it to me then? Because I'm a Gentile. And the Lord revealed to him that he was going to give him uh, a, a, a supernatural token of the twelve uh, tribes of Israel, the gemstones that represent the twelve tribes tribes of Israel and that he had an assignment for him to do in that way and so then the gemstones uh, uh, came just dropped over the next month they start over one month from May the 1st of 2007 to May the 31st he had all 12 stones with the amber one being the last one when you see them in in in, in person they're just brilliant and causes a worship an adoration in your heart and awe of the presence of the Lord when you see them. 
absolutely outstanding. 1,200 gemstones, over 1,200 gemstones have fallen. The 12 uh, special stones that were given to him, uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that he is embracing in intercession before the Lord. And the Lord has a special assignment for him in the reaching of Israel, I believe. And uh, many other signs and wonders, such as the oil and the, the Bible dripping the oil and the walls dripping the oil. But all of it has released an acceleration of revival, an acceleration of souls, uh, and, and an acceleration of kingdom power. And this man, uh, Pastor Dennis, I believe was chosen because he is humble, because he is faithful, because he has integrity, because he is unselfish, and because he is wholly devoted to Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, he suffered a lot of persecution. People don't understand. They think he's of a cult or whatever. But I'll tell you, it's not a cult when people are getting saved and brought to the feet of Jesus and into his heart. It's not a cult when Jesus manifests his healing and deliverance power just like in the Bible. It's not a cult when the word of God is being exalted. It's not a cult when the name of Jesus is being so beautifully honored and where the fragrance of the nature and character of God is seen. It is the kingdom. Behold the kingdom of God, because it is at hand. Uh, Peter said, as he prophesied in Acts chapter 2, he said, in the last days, the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. And one of the things that would happen as a result of that outpouring is that there would be signs and wonders and harvests. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed? The goal is to... It's not just to get you so obsessed with signs and wonders. The goal is to show you that there are realities beyond your current realm. By the grace of God, one of these days, we'll just come and we'll dedicate about an hour and we'll watch a few videos of the revivals that have happened before now. It's important to connect with the moves of God and the things that he has done in time past. Hallelujah. It's very, very important because before he comes, brothers and sisters, I tell you, there will be a mighty church that will arise. All of these spiritual mysteries, tonight's message is just a spiritual awakening. It's to awake us from the slumber and to tell us there is more in God. That we no longer begin to just put our terms of work with God to money and marriage and power and mundane things thank god for these things we just finished a financial series but let me tell you the truth god is looking for revivalists god is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with and i've made myself available god knows with my entire life you reign you ancient zion's king Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, spirit of the deep. And weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh, sing, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth the spirit of the deep. And weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient 
Zion's King, we cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh, fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life, the divine life, the incorruptible seed of the word of God. We want to become epistles of power. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, see, you ancient Zion's King, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. of the deep cry out Kadosh you are mighty on your throne say you are mighty on your throne 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 on your we refuse to reduce your power. We step up the standard. Mighty on your mighty on your You are mighty on your You are mighty on You are mighty on your You are mighty on your you are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep. We cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. We invoke the ancient spirit of the Lord Most High. Lord, we are a generation that will embrace you. Break forth, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. Cry out, Kadosh. We cry out, Kadosh. Break forth that fountain of the deep. Shekatatata. There are impartations going on in this place. Leketeketekapa. Break forth, thou spirit of the Lord. We cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. We sing, O oh, ancient Zion's King. We cry out, Kadosh. We cry out, Kadosh. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep. 
the spirit of revival, apostolic signs and wonders, the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of power, the spirit of territorial impact, the spirit of encounters, open visions, visions of heaven. Thou spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, you ancient giants, king, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Enough of nominal Christianity, enough of powerless Christianity, enough of faking it in the name of faith. There is a substance, and this life is in his son. The Zoe life, the divine life, the energy, the ability of the spirit. The spirit of the Lord that will bring awakening, signs and wonders, miracles and breakthrough. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. We sing, you ancient Zion steam. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth the spirit of the deep. Cry out in our midst, O God. Let the spirit of adoption cry, Abba Father. Abba Father. Let that cry of revival, of a ministry of power ministry of the spirit that can change lives we will not deviate from the part of the apostles we will not deviate from the part of the prophets we will not deviate from the part of spiritual progress we will not deviate we refuse to bend we refuse to conform to the powerless dissertations of men. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Say, you are mighty on your throne. Make up your mind that if you teach, 
you teach as one who has touched heaven make up your mind that if you sing tonight you will sing as an oracle of grace enough of powerlessness enough of ministrations without impact without transformation press for one minute we'll soon round up but press go ahead go ahead and pray Lord I need power in my life I need power in my life I'm tired of faking it I want the Zoe life. I have received the Son. Lord, let the life, let the realities in Christ be manifest. Let the realities in Christ be manifest. I'm tired of a powerless ministry. walk conscious from today if you have received the son I want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations there is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without grace. Stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. your voice and pray in one minute I am determined to be supernatural in every way in every way no the sons of God are not natural people they are supernatural in every way pray my hands are supernatural my words are supernatural lift your voice and pray My utterances are supernatural. They carry the life-giving power, the Soweil life. The power to heal, the power to alter 
are the destinies of people the power to transform their lives you are mighty on your throne you are mighty on your throne you are mighty in my life 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 say you are mighty in my life 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 you are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. One more time. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That from today dead religion will die out of your life I pray for you that the substance of spiritual reality that which authenticates the manifestation of the Zoe life that which proves here and now that you are not natural that which proves that the earthly the terrestrial has become celestial and heavenly I pray in the name of Jesus that may that life begin to manifest through your life. That your hands will become instruments of revival and signs and wonders. That when men need God to show up, they will call on your attention because you will be the clearest representation of the divine life in your territory. I pray for you may your words carry the power from heaven may your words no longer be barren and powerless may your words authenticate the fact that the spirit of life is at work in you may they bring healing may the words bring grace may they bring life like the river in Ezekiel 47 that everywhere it flows let the fish that was dead come back to life let the souls that are dead come back to life i pray that from today your life and your ministry will no longer just be a ministration of death wasting the time of god's people may you step into an unusual dimension i'd like you to receive what i'm releasing upon you is a ministration of the spirit many of you will go back to your meetings from today and you will begin to see cripples walk you will begin to see the demonstration not just in talk 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 with no results there are many of you that will go back to your homes and the moment you step in there all of a sudden your territory begins to react because the Zoe life not just that which is in Christ alone that which has been manifest right here right now right here right now right here right now you will go back to your territories many of you will pass people and you will hear spirits scream out of them you didn't plan to pray for them but you took the presence of God you took the life of heaven so where the life that controls heaven so where the life that upholds all things I'm praying for you that everything that has defied God in your life in the name that is above all names may that so life come upon it right now may that so life come upon every sick body here right now may that life of God let it come upon every dying spiritual life 
every lukewarm spiritual life the life that makes men doubt whether God is working with you or not I pray for you let it change from tonight you don't have to tell people you're a man of God carry that life carry that divine life may that life halt sickness from your body permanently this repeated stamina circle of nonsense that comes upon your body discern the lord's body so that you will be strong discern the lord's body father i pray let there be mighty men and women that will arise from this meeting tonight let tonight's meeting produce a spiritual awakening and i stretch my hands and i pray for you whatever you came here with in the name that is above all names that is not consistent with the zoe life whatever it is that is not consistent with the life of heaven right now i declare in the name of jesus that it leaves your body and your life now i cause every pain i cause every situation that is attempting to challenge god in your life in the name of jesus christ may the lord put a testimony in your mouth that will verify before men that you are a carrier of his presence father we give you all the praise listen walk out of this meeting not just with an excitement but with a consciousness that you are not only a carrier but a dispenser the bible says the first adam was made a quickening soul a quickening soul can only benefit but cannot dispense but the second adam was made a life giving spirit a life giving spirit next time someone is sick around you don't just turn and say bring him to joshua sermon or bring him to this tell him in the name of jesus i agree with you you have been doing it as an ordinary christian that's why it's not working you have just been doing it and say after all i'm a brother do it now as one who is together with the holy spirit always realize that it's not about you it's about the paracletos always realize you are going to preach don't just go alone i'm going to go and minister you'll be disappointed go with him when you stand on that stage even if you do not know what to say realize that there is one the spirit of life as you stand to sing and minister realize that you are not just talking songs or melodies but you are ministering life and you will be amazed to see people change don't be afraid of confronting situations with god without god there are many things that are not possible hallelujah i want to pray for people here right now keep standing everyone i want to pray for people right now you had this fiery message tonight on the life of god there are people who have not received the son of god you have heard about jesus you may have even preached about him he has been offered to you many times but you have not received him hallelujah there are others who have given their lives to christ but sincerely you know that the name of what you are doing right now based on the standard of god you have missed out on the track of spiritual progress and you need to make your way those two categories of people i don't care if you have been a preacher for 30 years you need to make your way right you say lord this thing i've been doing is not christianity i'm i'm i'm, I'm tired of playing games right now inside and outside please make your way quickly and come to the front i want to pray for you i want to pray for you don't sit back don't wait for someone to come before you god bless you find your way to the front there are many people outside don't sit back make your way to the front God bless you. Koinonia, keep celebrating them as they come.
life must change. Don't worry. Leave her alone. Hallelujah. Tonight will mark a turning point and a defining moment in the life of many people. Hallelujah. Please draw, draw close as I lead you to pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Um, I understand there's a woman who there are, there are two people I'm supposed to minister to, but I'll minister to one right now. There is a woman who has been having issues of miscarriage. This is not word of knowledge. I, I'm aware that the woman is supposed to be here. I don't know if she came, if she's around. Is, is that person around or that family? You are the one? Not just word of knowledge. You, you came. Uh, is this your first time of being here? Come. You are the one with that situation? From where did you come? Mina. Mina. How long has it been? Four times. Four times. You get pregnant, you lose the baby. You get pregnant, you lose the baby. We are glad to announce to you that this is where it stops. I guarantee. Listen, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. God did not bring you here to waste your time. There is always a spirit behind it. Four times is not mistake. Four times is no longer biology. Four children, four destinies, four lives thrown away by the assault of darkness. Now imagine if this was your church and a woman comes like this to come and meet the great man of God. Then you talk grammar and by the time you finish explanation, the Bible never said creation is waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. It says creation is waiting for the manifestation. Madam, I assure you that not only will God set you free but there will be restoration in your life. You believe that? Lay your hands on your stomach and let's pray. Brings joy. We represent the government of heaven. Lay your hands. That devil of darkness. Your time is over in this woman's life. Right now. You are a wicked spirit of darkness. And you must leave. Right now. Go. Out of her. By the power of the Holy Spirit, there is an anointing coming upon you for you to be free of this nonsense that the devil has planted in your stomach. I feel heat leaving my hands to you. That wicked spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you are free of this demonic influence. Not only will you give birth, you will go and take in immediately and your child will stay. You will have as many children as you want in the name of Jesus Christ. This thing is not happening to you alone. Huh? This, is, this is a trend in your family. This is because I'm praying for you and I see a spirit. Huh? I'm seeing a trend. It's something that keeps happening. People miscarry and people have all kinds of things. And so it's not like it's something bad you did as a person. Are you getting my point now? But Jesus Christ set you free. Where's your husband? He's in Mina too. Go and tell him that not only will the Lord um, bring a child to your family, God will turn around your entire lives because you are here. You believe that? Father, in the name of Jesus, confirm your word. Like Eli, I speak to you like you spoke to Anna. Go and come back with your child. It's done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Those of you coming, uh, I want you to lift your hands. Please, you are not reciting a poem. Young and old mean it serious with Jesus. See, the trouble is when people come out like this, they suddenly remember that they were emotional and they came out. And then they are embarrassed and then they are ashamed. This is serious business. Hallelujah. Say after me from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I believe in you some of you as you are praying the power of God will come upon you strongly because the gospel is the power of God right to them that believe I receive your life I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare 
that from tonight I'm no longer natural I'm no longer ordinary the power that raised Christ from the dead is within me I declare that habits addictions and every life that is not consistent with that of the kingdom has no power over me right now the Holy Spirit the very Spirit of God the life of God is at work in me I declare that I go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep those hands lifted please father in the name of Jesus I pray I commend these ones to you spirit of the living God you are the life-giving spirit of God I pray that tonight in a very supernatural way you will come upon their lives and you will make them ambassadors of the kingdom right now in the name of Jesus may that life and that power may that fire that all surpassing life of the spirit come upon you breaking every chain and every limitation that comes with the old man in the name of Jesus I set you free to begin to experience the life of God the Zoe life in the name of Jesus hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you